Wives are basically property. Uh, and so, you know, we've got guys who are members of the church, you know, who will start their own businesses, and they'll be the ones in charge of actually digging the ground and things like that. So you will see changes, um, and some of that is in the church, some of that is, there's also influences from other people in Uganda, just men do some work in Uganda nowadays, so there are, there are changes, yes. That was kind of a convoluted answer, but <laughs> <laughs> there are changes, so... Yes? Do wives equate status? Do wives equate status? I guess so. I think they think of it more in terms of cows. <laughs> I mean, in a sense, though, like, ch children are a blessing. And yeah. so the more wives you have, the more children you have. Technically, if you have 10 wives and you have 10 children per wife, you can have 100 kids. And that's your. Social security, that's who's going to take care of you, that's going to, who's going to make you wealthy, that's who's going to provide for you, make it possible for you to sit around. So, um, you, in a sense, it is a status, it is a wealth because they want the children. So. What took you and Jenny to care about I'm already planning on being there indefinitely. So, how did we get to care and are we going to stay? Well, right now we're open to staying as long as the Lord would have us. So yes, we're very open to indefinite term there. Um, but we're planning to do like three years at a time. And we'll see how that goes. In terms of what got us there, um, it was different for both of us. From my side, it was I grew up in the OPC. My dad's an OP pastor. And every Sunday night I would hear missionary newsletters. And so I grew up hearing about missionaries. And knew from the time I was about 15 that I wanted to be a medical missionary in Africa. And so... In God's providence, the OPC has one medical mission site. And so when I graduated from all of my training, there was no doctor in Uganda at the time. So, hence so I'm there. But I also had gotten to visit five times and loved Uganda, so it was easy for me to go over. Um, I was raised in the RPCNA, a uh, sister denomination. And um, my parents were great at having missionaries in our home growing up. So I grew up learning about missions, um, reading about missions. Um, was really interested in it, but I didn't know that it would be something I would do personally. Um, when I was in high school, I got to rub shoulders with a lot of different people training to go to the mission field and really um, started thinking about it more seriously. And when I was in college, I took three different short-term missions trips. And the last one of those was to visit the OP mission site in Uganda. Um, and that was through RP short-term missions. And because of that, it's probably why I'm there now. So... I applied, came back from that short-term trip and applied to be a missionary associate for a year, and I'm still there. <laughs> Things happen. <laughs> <laughs> yes? Hey, I know Jenny's had malaria. Do you yeah. have to, what is yeah. that like to deal with that? It's like the flu, so the fevers and chills and headaches and aches and pains like the flu. It's basically, that's what malaria feels like. Um, and so even though we're on prophylaxis to try and prevent it, there's nothing that's a perfect prevention. Uh, and so all of the missionaries have had malaria several times. Uh, and so thankfully we're, we have a clinic there, we have medicines, and so you take the treatment and almost all the time one course of treatment will get rid of it for you. So. Um, um, usually in like anywhere from two to two days to a week, everything's, you're back to normal. The really bad is about two to three days, and then you usually can go back to work again. Yeah? What's the child mortality like there before having 10 kids? It's bad. It's high. Uh, yeah, so it's not only do you have the sanitation problems, you also have a culture where women do not go to a clinic for delivery. So in all of Karamoja, maybe 10% of them would deliver in a clinic or a hospital. And the majority would deliver inside one of those little stick huts all by themselves without making any noises. Um, and maybe have someone to come in after the baby's born to help at that point. Um, but again, the basic sanitation is horrendous. And so infant and maternal mortality is way higher than here. Um, it's like less than a tenth of a percent in the U.S., and it's well over one percent in Uganda. If it, They don't do statistics well at all, but it's really high. Uh, and so that's, again, a major teaching point. So and under five mortality. Under five mortality, mortality in all of developing countries is huge. So. That's usually infectious. 
Yeah. How do you get along with the government there? Uh, getting along with the government is pretty easy. Uh, number one, we're up in Karamoja, so most of the government officials don't want anything to do with Karamoja. <laughs> and so we can kind of do whatever we want to do. Um, but we do just try and keep above board. So we keep our clinic registered. We keep ourselves registered, all the staff registered. Um, we work through a Protestant medical bureau that does a lot of stuff with the government for us. Uh, and so basically you keep up with all the paperwork and they don't care what you do. So it's, it's easy to get along and then locally, you know, they do have local leaders in each village like the elders, the older men. Um, and so, you know, we tell them we're coming for a Bible study or a medical outreach and they, don't, they also really just don't care what we do. So it's pretty easy to get along. Question? How many snakes do we have in our yard? Well, hopefully none right now. But we've had like five or ten at a time, but hopefully none right now. We don't raise them as pets, so it's only, it's if only on them, accident. They yeah. So they want to be really sneaky if they want to live. <laughs> yes? You had the mixed uh, Christian Muslim couple, which is interesting. Uh, what about Islam? So Islam in general is not a major problem in Uganda. So they, Uganda is considered a Christian country. And so they say about 85% of the people would claim to be Christians and maybe 10 or 15 would claim to be Muslims. Uh, and so if there are Muslims, they're mainly concentrated in the city. So Bali has way more than we have in Karamoja. Kampala has way more. Um, and so when we see them in Karamoja, it's usually only the merchants. So people who have come up from Mbali, uh, but there are very few that are like native in Karamoja around us. And so even though we don't see that many, but the ones who are in the city, it has, as far as I know, there's been no major conflict. So like the violence and stuff just is not a problem in Uganda. So, it, you know, you've got Sudan and you've got Kenya and all these surrounding nations, but it's not, not a major problem in Uganda. What about witch doctors and voodoo and all that? So there are witch doctors, very common in Karamoja. Um, we don't know who they are. They don't, they're don't. they not like dressed up funny or anything like that. They just do their local medicine. So we'll see evidence of them because they'll come into the clinic. You know, they've tried the witch doctor or whatever, and then we'll come in when that doesn't work. Um, but it's never been a, like a conflict because, again, we're pretty sure the witch doctors come to the clinic as well eventually. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't know who they are to know that for sure, but that's just what people tell us. So. There's rumors that go around yeah. <laughs> who the witch doctors are, and you're like, oh, he was at the clinic last week. Dependency is the biggest problem. Let's see, let me rephrase that. Dependency is like the, from a practical perspective, the biggest problem that we have. And so not only just in terms of practical, everyday having people beg from you, but even in terms of the gospel, um, it's the major problem. And so as you're interacting with people, it's almost always ends up being, you know, what are we going to get from that? And so from a... Practical perspective, you know, you've got 